The Audit Tuesday topic today is what place does IGA have in a ransomware defense? So for this very important topic, we have risk and board expert, Peter Gailey. Hi, Peter. Hi, Ashley. So first, Peter, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I've been in the uh, computer business for 45 plus years. Uh, been on all sides of the table, started in the OEM business, then the big systems business, and was literally one of the leaders in the first ever e-commerce play. Uh, from there, uh, the last 10 years or so, I've been in cybersecurity. So I formed Daily Solutions, um, and we can talk about that a little bit. So I'm, I'm 45 years in the business lately, um, cybersecurity. So your background gives you a special view on ransomware. I heard you even wrote a paper titled Blueprint for Ransomware Defense. Is that correct? You can find that on my uh, website, gailysolutions.com. G-A-I-L-E-Y solutions.com. Yes. So in a recent joint release by the JRTF, the Joint Ransomware Task Force, in their Stop Ransomware Guide, so they stated that one of the key defenses against ransomware is a practice of least privilege. So what exactly does that mean? Least privilege is uh, really pretty simple to understand. You want to have your, as a, as a company, you want to have... Uh, your clients, your partners, your employees, et cetera, every, all of your communities, you want them to be able to get to the tools, the services, and the data that they need, right? But you only want them to get to the data that they need. You don't want them to be able to get to other data. For instance, you don't want a, um, uh, let's, let's say an accounts let, let, let's say you don't want a, an accounts payable person getting into human resource records. You don't want to have a person that's on a shipping dock be able to get into and modify corporate financials, if you will. Jeff Bezos doesn't want people, anybody like you and I, to get into his financial statements and be able to uh, manipulate them. So um, the issue of least privileges is, is just that. It's putting together a governance program and a, uh, a set of uh, checks and balances to be able to limit people's access. So you want to enable people to do things like HR, do, HR people do HR things, right? But you only want them to be able to get to and see and manipulate the, the data and the applications and whatnot for them to do their job properly. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So how does this relate to the concept of privilege creep? Privilege creep is uh, a byproduct of what I kind of call laziness. Um, no offense to anybody, but um, <laughs> the uh, uh, privilege creep is, let me give you an example. It's when you have not executed your governance properly and you haven't uh, followed your um you know, the procedures and policies and stuff that you have in place. So privilege creep would be, let's say I am a uh, new college hire. I've been brought in as an intern. I'm in a training program. And the only thing that I can see are the stuff that's available in that training program. And that might include financial, you know, the, the ability to see financials, the ability to see different parts of the organization as I'm coming up to speed, right? Well, when I go to become a marketing person, my profile should change. My needs should change, right? And I'm going to need to be able to get deeper into the marketing tool set. But I might want to be like removed from some of those other places. Or if I take a switch and a promotion three years later, and now I'm a salesperson, um, I'm going to want to be able to see the all the sales kinds of data, information, tools, that kind of stuff. But you're probably going to want to disable me from the marketing um internal tools right so so the creep is uh relative laziness and not reprofiling me to be able to um just make my profile again it goes to governance what can i see what are the things that i need to do my job uh properly and you know I probably probably shouldn't be able to get to the other stuff there's risk in uh in in creep that so 
Oh, if, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, does that answer your question? I mean, that's that's my view of what it is. A hundred percent. So enterprises need to start looking more closely into who they have granted privileges, right? And what yeah. access they currently have. Absolutely. I mean, that's what it's all about. You don't want um, the person on the shipping dock being able to get into the corporate financials. So this all falls under the category of IGA, identity governance, right? Correct. So policies, procedures, setting up identities and who can get, you know, it's, it's governance. It's, that's exactly what governance is. And in your opinion, are most organizations, especially small and medium-sized businesses, doing a poor job in IGA? That's probably an unfair question. I, I think it, it's a function of sizes of companies and um, the industries that they're in and whatnot. Um, this, I think it's fair to say the smaller the company, the less um, informed they're going to be on, on IGA kinds of uh, services that are available. Uh, certainly, if I'm a small entrepreneur and I've got five people in my company, I've got a bunch of uh, procedures that I use that aren't necessarily documented, right? I, I don't want to have somebody else, you know, unauthorized access to my check, to the checkbook, you know, kind of stuff mm -hmm. or the financials. So yes, it's uh, it's a maturity, you know, company maturity kind of a kind of a topic, I think. Uh, are they doing a poor job? You know, I think everybody's doing what they can. And it's a question of tools and, and expertise and whatnot. The, the, bigger the, the bigger the company might be, the more resources they might have to be able to apply um, more standard policies and procedures and, and governance for that matter. So, you know, again, are they doing a poor job? Kind of, but, I, you know, I don't, I'm not sure that's the priority. You know, a formal program in a three-person company is not the priority. A formal program in a thousand-person company is, right? So, Garrett, how can you attest help this problem? I, I liked how uh, Peter answered that. Basically, you know, the SMB and the commercials especially, you know, they're, they're struggling in this space. They're doing a poor job. Well, they may have gaps. And that's where Peter right. Yaley and, and you attest can work together. Peter Gator comes in, recognizes the gaps. He's been all this amazing experience. All these companies you can look at a company quickly and say, this is where your gaps. And then a tool like you attest comes in and plugs in, not in months, not in years, the way other IGA does, in minutes. And then Peter and the team could then do an access discovery, an immediate access discovery right. of the entire enterprise. These are all your roles. These are this. And then we set up together an ongoing relationship where the tool, you attest, it's cloud-based tool, does regular periodic access reviews, monthly on the admin accounts, quarterly on the users. That's how it works together. That's how it can work and create IGA for big and small. Remember, you know, Ashley, you're in charge of these things. We've got customers doing as big as 850,000 roles with us. But right. we also have 100 user customers as well. So, yeah, let's work together. Perfect. So, Peter, how, can you tell people how they can get a hold of you? Well, let me do one thing first. Let's circle back to ransomware. Sure. Because that's the, the, the topic here, yeah. right? Um, you know, rant, if, you, if you've got somebody with if – you, if, if you have a le uh, 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 leakage, scope creep, uh, if you've got, if you haven't locked down your identity and access management, if you have an employee that left a year ago, but they all their credentials are still available and people can get to them, that's a hacker's nightmare. I mean, that's a ha hacker's dream. Right. Right. So identity access management governance is really key to help lock down your environment to mitigate the risks for ransomware, if that makes sense. Very that important. makes sense. So let me just go and tap. That's great, bring up because the problem with identities in IGA for uh, for the hacker is well, not a problem. The solution for them is this: these accounts that are orphaned, ghosts, too much privileges. Right. They have tons of dwell time. They take over an account that no one's using. No one discovers. No one turns it off. Dwell time equates to what? 
it equates to lateral movement across the enterprise and privilege escalation. And that's what a problem is. And that's what IGA and UATS IGA solves through the enterprise. It eliminates those uh, ghost and orphan accounts and, and cuts back the excess privileges, especially on those key admin and cloud accounts. Right. So let's say somebody comes in as an intern, somebody goes, graduates to a finance position, graduates to a sales position. You've had the scope creep that we've talked about before. They leave. Everything is still active. A hacker can get in. Ouch. Very, very, very bad. Very, very bad. So governance uh, can can definitely help reduce the cybersecurity risk for ransomware. Absolutely. Perfect. So us at UATest, you can contact us at info at uatest.com and we'll execute on your identity governance for anti-ransomware and compliance needs. And then Peter, do you want to tell people how they can get a hold of you? Yeah, um, I get my uh, Gailey Solutions, G-A-I-L-E-Y Solutions.com website. Uh, certainly find me on LinkedIn. Certainly find me on Twitter. Uh, I have a LinkedIn business page that uh, you can find me there. All my contact information is there. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Enough.